away, mate. You're all right. It's all right. Just put them now. We've got it. I'll be back in two minutes. I'm just going to get right. me uh, some milk. All right, mate. Okay. Alright, do you need any money? I'm, no, I'm okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be back in two. Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep the memory of what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Christ came down, and he came down to purchase a great salvation. He came down to give us hope. He came down to bring us home. He came down to give us a life. He came down to give us a future. He came down to bring us into the new life of God. My friends, there is a new life of God. He came down to give us a new life, to bring us into God, to know God, to love God, to know the goodness of God in our lives. That's why He came down. He came down to open the way to heaven. He came down to bring us life. He came down to bring us into the presence of God. And you can chip away at the drink, you can chip away at the drugs, you can chip away at the money. The money and the drugs and the sex and all the rest of it. You can chip away at it. But when you chip away at it, it'll make you empty. But when you come to God, he'll fill you. When you come to God, he'll give you a joy. When you come to God, he'll give you a peace. When you come to God, he'll give you a hope. God will fill you with his goodness. He'll fill you with his love. He'll fill you with his joy. He'll fill you with his peace. He'll fill you with his power. God will come into your life. My friends, there is glory, glory to know. There is joy to know, peace to know, power to know. There is a God to know who can fill your heart today. Whether you're in despair, whether you're sad, whether you're happy, whatever it is, there is a greater joy that you can have by knowing God and being right with God. To know God and to be right with God. To be in the presence of God and to know the love of God in your life and the joy of God in your life by trusting Him as your Saviour. By having faith in Him. By trusting in Him. By having faith in Christ. Why did He come down from heaven? Why was He born in a stable? He was born to die and He died on a cross for you. He shed His blood for you that you could be forgiven and right with God and that you can be cleansed in the presence of God. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever slept around? Have you ever back charity to your mum and dad? Have you ever done wrong? We all have. But Christ died on that cross. Christ died on that cross. He died on that cross and shed his blood on that cross. He shed his blood that you could come home. He shed his blood that you could come home. That you could come home to him. That you could come home to him. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. The Prince of Glory who created the universe. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same created everything it says. And the Word created everything and the Word became flesh. And the Word came and the Word of God Jesus Christ came and died on that cross. 
And when he died on that cross, he died for you. He took the wrath and the punishment for you. Have you ever lied? He died for your lies. Have you ever stolen? He died for your stealing. Have you ever committed adultery? He died for your sexual sin. Have you ever backchat to your mom and dad? He died for your rebellion. Have you ever worshipped your car, your house, your money, your pension? You worshipped something more than God? He died for that. He died for that. Come and debate me then, sir. Don't run away. God bless you, sir. Ad hominem attack is not the best way to debate, sir. God bless you. He came and died on that cross and was crushed on that cross. He was crushed on that cross. They whipped him. They laughed at him. They mocked him. And in the courtyard, they laughed at him and mocked him and they whipped him. They took a whip and they whipped his back. They whipped his back. And his back was broken. And then they grabbed him and got him to carry his cross. And then they nailed him to that cross. They nailed his hands. They nailed his feet. When they nailed him to the cross, they lifted him up. And there on that cross, when he was dying on that cross, he was dying on that cross for the things that you did wrong. Thanks, Ange. The things that you and I have done wrong. The things that you've done wrong and I've done wrong. He was hanging on that cross for you and was dying on your behalf taking your punishment and your wrath and your judgment upon himself. It says in Isaiah, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And he talks about he was bruised for our sin. He died for our sin. He says he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And on that cross, he took your punishment on your behalf. On that cross, he took your wrath and your judgment. He took your punishment for you. On that cross. Took your judgment on that cross. He died in your place on that cross. He shed his blood for you on that cross. And you might think you're nothing, but you're not. You're something. You're something before God. God so fit to send his son to die for you. So you are not just nothing. You are precious because he was willing to shed his blood for you on that cross. How precious you are that the Son of God came and died on that cross for you. And you, if you throw away your salvation, if you throw it away and say, Jay, I'm going to go on the town tonight, I don't need your Jesus, then I don't pray that you die. And I don't want to say it, but you're going to be lost forever. You're going to be lost forever in eternity. You're going to be lost forever in the wrath of God, in the wrath to come. There is a wrath of God. You do wrong, you'll know the wrath of God in your life. Yeah, you do wrong, I'll find you. You start lying and God will come down upon you. You start doing wrong and God will come down upon you. The wrath of God comes down upon that which is wrong. But the wrath of God came down upon His Son. The wrath of God fell upon His Son. But the wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness of men. And the wrath of God comes. He comes against that which we do wrong. But he came and died in our place. And shed his blood in our place. So, you've got to turn away from the lies, repent of the lies, 
Turn away from the lying. Turn away from the sleeping around. Turn away from getting drunk. Turn away from taking drugs. Turn away from the porn. Turn away from fiddling the tax, fiddling the electric, fiddling the gas bill. You turn away from all that. You turn away from materialism. You turn away from the porn. You turn away from the drugs. You turn away from any sex, unless it's between a man and a woman. Genesis chapter 2. You turn away from all these things and realize that Christ died on a cross for you. Christ died on a cross. And put your faith in Him. Faith in Christ. Once you come to trust in Christ, you're saved, you're born again. You're born again by the Holy Ghost. You're born again by the Holy Spirit. And you come into the glories of God. You come into the joy of the Lord. But you've got to come to an end in yourself. You've got to come to an end in your own righteousness, in your own pride, in your own conceit, in your own selfishness, in yourself. You've got to come to an end in it. You've got to come to an end in yourself and realize that your only hope is Christ. Your only salvation is Him. The only way to heaven is Christ. The only way to be saved is Christ. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Hinduism, not atheism, not agnosticism. The only way to be saved is Jesus Christ. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And only He has the right to save you. Only He has the right to forgive you. Because He is the Son of God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And He came and died and rose again. And only He can save you. Only He can bring you home. Only He can forgive you. Only He can make you right. Only Christ. He has influenced history more than anybody else. History has been influenced by Christ more than anybody else. Science. Jesus influenced science more than anybody else. Most of the greatest scientists were people who believed in God and in Jesus. I He influenced philosophy more than anybody else. All the great philosophers have been influenced by Jesus. Jesus Christ influenced art and music more than anybody else. My friends, the time of ignoring God is over. The time of saying Bible bashing over there, don't want to know, is over. It's over. Those days are over. We are in a new day. We're in a new time. The days are shaking. The nations are shaking. It's time to wake up. Get with it. You can't keep ignoring it. You can't keep rejecting it. The times are changing. Things are changing, things are moving in the nations and things are going to happen in this nation that will shake this nation to its very foundations. You're going to be shaking in your boots what's going to happen to this nation. Things are changing. You cannot just live on a diet of secularism. That bubble is about to be bursting. It's going to burst. Secularism is going to burst before your very eyes and fall apart before your very eyes. You can't live on secularism anymore. You need to come to Christ. Only He can save you in the coming days. Only He can save you and give you hope. Only He can help you in the midst of the crisis, in the midst of the pain. Only He can help you in these days. The times are changing, the winds are blowing. Things are not what they used to be. We've had affluence for 30 years. We've had money, we've had food on the table, we've had warm houses, but things are changing. Things are not gonna be like they always used to be. Things will change. And when they change and you get desperate, the bubble of secularism will not help you. That bubble has gone. That bubble is burst. That bubble is over. That bubble is finished. That bubble has gone.
And you are blind, walking in the midst of a blind nation. Lost in the materialism of this age. Lost in the materialism of the times and the pleasure of the times. But the pleasures of this world and the materialism of this world has drugged you. And as you are drugged by the materialism and the secularism, it will lead you to hell. It is a false, false land of milk and honey. There is no milk and honey at the end of secularism. There's no milk and honey at the end of secular culture. It is a bubble that is burnt and will have no future. The only hope is Christ. The only hope is Christ. The only hope is Him. The only hope is to know that Christ is the good shepherd. Christ is the shepherd that died on a cross for you.